Welcome to Tokyo. Crowd in. Crowd in. All right. Um, good morning. Thank you. Uh, this is the Open V Switch with Open Virtual Networking Session by people that don't work on Open V Switch. Yeah, that, that, that's a subtitle that you can't read, but that's 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 basically us. I'm Sean Lin. I'm a principal engineer at Time Warner Cable. Uh, work with Dave and a, a whole bunch of our other team members on the OpenStack team. My focus is generally uh, Neutron and Nova. And I'm uh, Dave, and I work at Time Warner Cable as well. Uh, we've had a, a, an OpenStack cloud up for uh, a year and a quarter now, and uh, have brought it up to uh, uh, Kilo and Partial Liberty. Um, and I'm the lead engineer for compute, but also work on a lot of other things, including the networking. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to the, uh, the, the uh, Denver OpenStack meetup leaders that also joined uh, our Colorado cloud. Uh, we're both from Colorado, and I also lead the Colorado OpenStack meetup. I think I'd like to open up before Dave jumps into the, the heart of everything to say uh, that this is probably going to be a, a little more of an overview than some of you were expecting. I see a smattering of faces here who probably know way more about some of these subjects than we do. But we are operators uh, of it, and uh, we started spiking OVN, so we're kind of delving into a few things for the first time. And what we want to do is cover some of the problems that we've seen with OBS, uh, some of the things that we've seen with OBS uh, Neutron integration, and uh, then go over some of our interesting material with OVN. Yeah, and he stole a little bit of my thunder there. I've, been, I've uh, had West Nile virus for the last six weeks. I just got better in time to get here, but really not to prep. So. Uh, Sean has none of the none of the responsibilities for our lack of, of, of preparation, and I, I bear all those. So all the mistakes are mine, and all the omissions are mine. Uh, we will also give a huge shout out to the OpenV Switch and Neutron team. They did a stellar presentation on Tuesday. If you have not had a chance to see it, I'll show you a link at the end. Uh, uh, it'll go into a lot more depth on OVN than we will be able to go to. All right, so OVS 2.4.0 is basically the release that is out with Liberty. Um, I think all of the distributions are also providing that uh, version of OVS now. Um, it includes Open Virtual Networking's toaster oven. I love their names. The toaster oven release of oven. Uh, sometimes OVN is called oven. Uh, and that's the ready for test release. Uh, but Open vSwitch itself also includes a lot of improvements. Uh, DPDK, which is uh, basically fast uh, hardware-enabled uh, uh, networking, um, Geneve support for uh, additional tunneling, uh, Docker support, uh, some default port changes, and bash completion. That's my favorite one. That's your favorite one. I'm All on right. The command line, yeah. Um, there are also obviously some OpenStack improvements that are utilizing this. Um, and in so when, uh, when we proposed this talk, we were going to talk about Kilo and Liberty. I know Liberty's released, but uh, there are a lot of people still running Juno or get or not quite running Kilo yet. So we'll talk a little bit about that. So um, you, go yeah, ahead. Go I was going to say, so if you aren't going the OVN route and then spiking that and you're using the native uh, or you're using standard everyday Kilo Liberty um, layer two agent, these are two things that you want to actually look at and start turning on. We haven't rolled these out in production, but I have spiked it all the way up to that. Um, essentially, up to Kilo, most of these calls were native calls that were root wrapped. And when you end up on the uh, control node side, the network node side of the world, and you have a huge number of routers, and you have to rebuild those, it takes forever, 10 to 15 minutes for 50 to 60 routers. And, and there's a lot of causes of that, but a, a big chunk of that is doing this root wrap sudo uh, inefficient call. So as of Kilo rolling out uh, the VSCTL, the VS Kettle calls, all have a native Python interface on that. Um, I don't, I'm not sure I saw six to seven times speed up, as the blueprint said, but uh, definitely noticeable in that. And I haven't experienced any issues with with switching that over. It's a one-line switch in the config file, and uh, we're getting close to running, ro rolling it out in production as well. And uh, probably that last bullet is probably the most important if you're an operator. Um, we, this, this has been a long-standing issue with us. Um, if you had to restart OVS, 
you took a significant outage uh, on your control plane. It wasn't so bad on a compute node uh, because there just isn't as much running there, but on a control plane, uh, an OVS uh, L2 agent outage was painful. And it was on the startup side. You could actually shut down the agent and everything ran fine until about five minutes when the Mac learning ran out. But on startup, the decision making was, I don't know what to do with this, just flush everything. So on our control nodes, that amounted to about 2,500 flows, 3,000 flows. And that just takes a lot of time to rebuild. And during that time, we have customer outages. So this is really, really important to us. Absolutely. Yeah, this is one that uh, I ran into sideways. Um, it's since been fixed in Kilo. Uh, essentially, when you create a port in OVS, um, if you've looked underneath the hood in the Linux namespaces and then that's added to a namespace, that's kind of a semi-illegal operation or has been recently and it just works and nobody really notices it. During their uh, gate tests for DVR, uh, this caused, started causing kernel faults, and as I kind of stumbled onto this, I realized that some of some of the cleanup we were doing for upgrade to Kilo and some of the other operations we were doing in dev, there were kernel faults that trace back to this. Um, it is a fixing Kilo, but it also required uh, OVS uh, kernel, kernel support. Kernel support, yes. Yep. So it, it was out in 4.0, but I think I think everybody's backported it. That's got a supported stream. And and the outcome of it, if you ever see it, is really that uh, that well, first of all, kernel faults and the logs are not cool, but <laughs> and a little bit scary. Uh, but your functionality of those ports in OVS just doesn't work anymore, and you have to end up by hand removing them and getting them recreated from scratch. So it it creates operational problems. So this is what we do at uh, Time Warner Cable with OpenV Switch. Um, uh, Sean actually wrote the slide, but uh, why, don't, why don't you go ahead? Sure. Okay. Um, we have pretty simple use case up front. I, I guess at the time, when two years ago, when we put things in place, VXLAN was not not simple. Um, that's a little bit why we decided to go OVS versus Linux Bridge is uh, better VXLAN support. And behind the scenes, I knew that because we're a cable company and we have our cloud integrating with lots of other cable ent gear. entities yeah. in the company network gear. that we were going to have to do some fun networking at the edge of OpenStack. Um, that has actually come true and, and OVS is providing us an easier means to connect to things on the edge. Neutron may not support it, but we can at least put that in place. Um, the rest of our use case is pretty, pretty normal traffic. We aren't trying to do anything with uh, you know, video streaming or non-TCP UDP protocols, so it's pretty average, um, and we aren't pushing crazy bandwidth, so we don't use DPDK yet. Yet, yet. <laughs> um, and it, it, a lot of our business use is actually is, is more like business usage than it is yeah. uh, video streaming usage. We'll get there, but right now uh, we've got plenty of uptake inside of our company with just kind of you know, web page type type access. Not, uh, we're not video streaming at the current time. If you ended up seeing the incredible Rackspace demo that went viral uh, in Paris, that was the ludicrous speed uh, demo, we, we were caught by that, and so it was exciting for us to see that other people were having horrid problems. Um, as, our, as we went and started scaling up in the cloud, we started seeing a ton of crashes in OVS 1.4, um, operational production level, what's going on, and it didn't trace back to anything. So basically, as soon as we got back from uh, Paris... Paris, like that week. We used, <laughs> we used Ansible, and we upgraded our, all of our production. Like, minimal testing, I would say, because we were super confident. That this well, we, had, we, we built our own packages. Yep. That was one of the first times we had to build our own packages. The distro wasn't ready to do this yet, and they weren't sure that they had a root cause, so we c they couldn't convince us that they had a root cause so that we could use a backport. Uh, it turns out they didn't actually have it at that point. We found out later. So, so we had to. We basically had to move forward. And uh, and I think with OVS, that's probably the right answer. Move forward when you can with OVS. Everything gets better. Yeah. Uh, 
the the upgrade was actually relatively painless. We we have pain points on our network nodes because of all our we use legacy routers at this point, um, and and that requires those flows flushing. And so we had to take a little bit of an outage or at least semi work around that. Um, but but the upgrade itself was pretty painless. And uh, since then, uh, we realized that we'd come to blame everything on OVS, and now we can't. Um, so we actually have to solve we, problems. We've actually, we've actually gotten better at troubleshooting because we didn't have uh, uh, an obvious smoking gun anywhere. Right. Yeah, yeah. We, we couldn't just always point at OVS. We, we did come up we, with... We pointed at Sean, actually. Yeah. We didn't point at OVS. But I got to sleep, finally. Um, but we did end up with a massive number of automation scripts to do crazy cleanup things that now just sit there gathering dust, which is incredible for us to see. And so we've had solid performance since then, and uh, let's yeah. go on. All right. So uh, the 2.4.0 release notes include some uh, deprecations uh, that you need to be aware of, mostly for going beyond that. Um, I can't say that I'm intimately familiar with these, but I did see them, and I want to point them out. Uh, something about uh, GRE64 tunnel is deprecated and will be removed in 2.5, so just be aware of that if you're using it. We're not using that. Um, let's see. Uh, external network bridge option for the L3 agent has been deprecated in fa favor of a bridge mapping. Yeah, I'm reading this slide to you. Um, <laughs> but uh, that's what I do. Uh, I, I have more to say on the external bridge. Okay, mapping. go ahead with the external bridge. Um, one of our customer requests is, uh, you know, well, we've got a huge subnet of our own, and we want to put that into OpenStack. We call this service Bring Your Own IP. BYOIP. Exactly. And it's gone viral in the company, kind of silly, but um, this external bridge networking option allows, uh, was the way you mapped your, your connection to the external world. And this change here allows us to, uh, and related, allows us to plumb out multiple even L2 subnets uh, and L3 out of OVS, and it, it actually helps us to realize BYOP, BYOIP, I can't say it, Kay. for our customers. Cool. <laughs> okay, so open virtual networking. Um, again, a big shout out to uh, Justin, Ben, Russell and Kyle for their talk on Tuesday morning. It was up on YouTube by Wednesday morning. Uh, so you can, you can go watch it and you can just leave right now if you want because that'll be a better use of your time. But uh, um, it is in the master tree. So if you do a git clone of uh, OpenV switch, you get open virtual networking for free. Um, it, does, it does have these goals, uh, L2, L3 network virtualization, logical routers, multiple tunnel overlays that added the Geneve. Uh, works anywhere that Open vSwitch works. That's really important. Open vSwitch is, uh, it, it's a lot of the uh, reference architectures for uh, OpenStack rely on Open vSwitch, and so it'll work anywhere that Open vSwitch is working. Um, I, I can't say that that strongly enough. So that that's one of the big gets. That's 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 an easy get out of OVS. It works if OVS works. Um, here's the architecture, and this is, this is a big change. I'm gonna I'm gonna not do this justice, but I'm gonna talk through that. Um, this particular diagram comes out of the build when you build OVN. There is an architecture man page, and this comes straight out of it. So uh, at the top is your cloud management system. So you can, you can just substitute CMS with OpenStack because OpenStack is the only one that's ported so far. So this was basically built out of the box for OpenStack. So there's, a, there's an OVN plugin that goes into OpenStack, and then there's a northbound database, and that's what OpenStack is going to talk to. Um, and that OVN North D daemon will then talk to the southbound database. Um, and then inside of each of your hypervisors, whatever that hypervisor is, Zen or uh, libvirt, KVM, et cetera, you'll have an OVN controller. And uh, inside of there, you'll have your normal vSwitch and your normal OVSDB server. Um, and so you're writing kind of uh, at a high level language at the very top for the northbound database. And then the actual flows get pushed in at the OVN controller level inside of your hypervisor. So you're kind of writing a, a meta, a, 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 the, the, the OpenStack plugin is writing kind of a meta flow, and then the actual open flow is written uh, in the hypervisor. Um, what I didn't have, and probably should have up here also, is a view of how things were before OVN, or if you're not yet using OVN, there's actually some additional complexity that, we're basic, that basically gets abstracted away. And that's probably the biggest value I've seen out of OVN so far, is it simplifies things. Uh, it gets rid of uh, a Linux bridge, 
uh, that handles the IP tables today. And you, you basically just get closer to the metal so you get faster. And one of our first slides, I was saying, you know, Neutron integration with uh, native Python for OVS VS Kettle and OFCTL and Liberty, that all goes away and, and gets replaced. You just do this. this, yeah. Right, so. All right. Um, uh, no, no, we can't, no, no, yep. sorry, it's just very bright. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm just blocking the light. I'm not blocking you, I'm blocking the light. <laughs> No. no, no, no. OVN relies on OVS. OVS is still there, and OVS will continue working the way it has always worked. 2.4.0, if you're running OVS today, you should upgrade to 2.4.0. It'll just keep working the same way. So your, your L2 and L3 agents will work the same way they do today, uh, maybe better in Liberty. Um, uh, but if you want to move away from that architecture to a different architecture, uh, this, this, is, this is what uh, you will find opportunistically available. Inside of the OVS uh, Git tree, there is an OVN directory, uh, and there's some readmes in there that tell you how to build it and how to play with it. You don't have to actually deploy it. You can just go play with it, and you can learn about, you can learn about this architecture very simply uh, by just doing a git pull, doing a, a dot, uh, let's see, the uh, auto tool stuff, configure, make, uh, and, then, uh, and then you can make a sandbox where you can start playing with OVN. We'll talk a little bit about that on the last slide. And, and one of the big improvements on that is if you've ever trolled through the Neutron code L2 agent, L3 agent, you'll come down at some point where all, all those OVS commands are wrapped right now. So like, oh, add a port and delete a port and add this flow. And it's just hugely enumerated and messy to follow. And if you've ever tried to troubleshoot it backwards up the stack, it's super painful. Those use cases were encapsulated. So 10, 10 commands might create a port and plummet out into Neutron. Those are all encapsulated, rolled back up into OVN, and taken out of the Neutron code. Um, so uh, OVN also is utilizing some of those OVS improvements. Uh, so uh, in an upcoming release, I think, I think there is uh, uh, branches for this already. Um, and again, this came out of the release notes, so uh, my apologies. And also, uh, all the credit belongs to Russell Bryant. Um, uh, it does require new, some new, newer kernel stuff in order to use that. Uh, but this, again, gets rid of the IP tables type rules. Um, security groups are implemented as well. Uh, it, just, it, it just cuts out several stages in the pipeline. So everything should flow faster in Neutron as a result. Um, uh, Russell Bryant put up a blog entry uh, last week that talks about these new security groups. Um, the security groups from a, from a user perspective work the same way. It's just how they're implemented via ACLs that changes. If you've ever followed uh, where security groups are placed and how they're placed and the 27 different hops it has to do, I don't, that you, makes, you, you I'm wanna, super exaggerating. Yeah, it's you want to wash your hands afterwards. Six, yeah, yeah, you want to wash your hands afterwards. You trace, trace traffic through there. It uh, kind of collapses it down to a much more manageable troubleshooting scheme. That's a good question. Yes. <laughs> All right. So I told you there was a more info slide coming. So th there is more info. Um, so this is you just want to check out uh, check out OVS. Uh, do do the regular build, um, and but inside of inside of there there'll be an OVN directory where you can actually go build uh, play with OVN. Uh, they it comes with a, a sandbox area so that you can uh, create. Uh, Create ports, create flows, and, and watch it. Watch the uh, kind of the meta flows flow d fall down into the open flow world uh, and get implemented. Um, but more importantly, you really want to watch this OVN talk from two days ago. It's right here on YouTube. Um, they did an excellent job of covering this in much more detail. They are the developers. They know it way better than anybody externally could ever know it. Um, it is a good use of uh, 38 minutes of your time. Um, Let's see, what else? Uh, play with it in DevStack. So this is something I haven't gotten around to yet, but I would highly recommend it. Uh, this link will take you to a page where you can set up DevStack in a multi-node environment and actually run OVN and see how, it, how it's supposed to work before you go to the work of actually deploying it and changing all your Puppet and Ansible and Juju and whatever else you use. Uh, but, but, but you do want to start using this um, th there are also some other competing technologies. I'm not going to say that OVN is going to uh, replace sliced bread. It's world peace. Butter, uh, b we're world peace. Uh, 
I think, I think there are a number of other solutions that are also helping to flatten that stack. I think the uh, Astara, the new, uh, the new project from Aconda, uh, will also help in that environment. So be aware that there are some other technologies. Um, and Oh, I had, I had one more yeah, thing. And another, so okay. in addition to the devs, in okay. at Time Warner, we don't really run dev stack. No. Uh, we have a really, everything's automated. We can actually put a cloud of our cloud in our cloud. So nested clouds throughout the stack. So we can bring up a subset or our entire cloud inside our cloud and do it, all our testing. It's the way we do all our development, all of our, all yeah. of our testing. Um, we, so we use uh, Vagrant uh, with the OpenStack uh, provider, I think right. it's called. Uh, so that we can actually deploy any of our architecture on top of our cloud so that we can do next, next level devel. Um, I don't know if we did a, did we do a lightning talk on that this week? Nobody, uh, nobody thinks we did a lightning talk no. on that this week. Uh, but if you've got questions about what we call uh, VDEV, virtual VDEV, development yeah. environment, uh, feel free to the, hit any of us up. The advantage there was uh, in you know, one of the long flights over here. I uh, was able to actually start hacking together, and I say hacking because it was mostly on our automation side, uh, OVN into place in our cloud, and I got I got quite a bit of progress. I'm pretty pleased with the way things are coming together, but there's still some upstream patches that I had to do, and most of the work, to be honest, was on our automation side to get that to work, so I wasn't just manually hacking on 27 virtual machines, but uh, I'm pretty pleased with the way things are going. It's uh, worked worked pretty well. Okay. Um, that's all the material we have present, uh, prepared. Um, we can take questions. We may not be able to answer them, but we can start. Go ahead, Florian. <coughs> now, just talk. You're way too far back there for me to mic you, dude. security group issues or, you know, a lot of address pairs and, and whatnot. Um, how do you solve that? How do you get virtual IPs running inside your cloud? What's okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna repeat that for the audience, or for the, uh, the video as well. How do you, in, in a virtual development environment, how do you basically nest floating IP type information? Right. And it is a problem. So a lot of the work that we do, the, the, the short answer is we just don't run into the problem. Because a lot of the time we're actually trying to set up our automation and stuff that doesn't actually rely on a nested virtualization floating IP. So we can set up the networks, uh, you just can't get out. So that, that's the main solution. Um, when uh, we ignored the problem for yeah, a while. Yeah, we ignored the problem. We, we do have a, we we, do have a fix for but, this. But we do, do, we do do live migration and everything inside of our virtual development environment, but we're just not able to drill into it from outside. They can get out, but you can't get in. So the recent solution that we've done since we upgraded to Kilo is we, <coughs> yep, yep. What's turn that? Off, turn off per support security and then yep. allow it to plumb out yep. you know, properly. And you still have to have some external other virtual machine and, and a device on there to test it. But um, the other way we were doing it is the Neutron debug port create for a long time. It at least allows you to do some funky magic to get onto that. But uh, And uh, Florian, see me any time after uh, lunch or after 10 o'clock today. Uh, I have a frisbee for you for being the first one to ask a question. Uh, and this gentleman over here that asked a question also. You can find me anytime after this meeting. And I'll, I've got a frisbee. What's that? Discraft Ultra Star. Discraft Ultra Okay. No. No. You're not ringing any bells up here, so. The short answer is no, Dave. No, no. Uh, any, another question? Go ahead. Yep. It seems like Go ahead. a little bit of, at least conceptually, you know, overlap between where OVN is going, uh, Astara, Open Daylight, and SDN controllers. Can you compare, contrast, try to help us figure out what fits where? So, uh, okay, so my, my take on it is that there will always be a kind of the dev stack defaults, and that's what is going to be the best tested. But anybody that gets gate requirements in, and I think all three of those that you mentioned have gate, gating requirements, should work. It's, it's really kind of uh, giving you a broader menu to pick from. They, they, have, uh, they have different resources behind them, obviously. Um, uh, if, you, you know, if you need commercial support, you might have to go a different way, say from one than the other. Um, there are 
it's great that there are a lot of people solving this problem because there, there are lots of ways to skin this cat. So uh, if, you need, if you need switch level hardware support, like if you need a, a metal iron support, um, old, school, old school network metal iron support is going to favor one of those solutions. Um, uh, virtual metal, I mean uh, uh, an OS running on metal, uh, like a Broadcom chipset, uh, is going to favor another one of these solutions, or maybe a couple of these solutions. Uh, and if you want a pure software implementation with no metal at the top, you, you might want to go this way or the other ways, but th 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 that, that, that's going to skew your perspective, right? Um, we are a large uh, IP shop, basically. I mean, that's anybody that's in uh, cable these days is basically an IP shop. Um, and so we've got a lot, of, a lot of custom or expensive networking gear that we would like to be able to plumb into. So that kind of skews our thinking. Uh, but we also want to be able to go forward and do a pure software deploy on that, that same kind of gear. And we're doing both. So that, that, that definitely flavors our thinking. I think, I think the first step that I always think about is, since, since I take the calls as well, our whole team, I mean, we're a real DevOps team, so you take a few weeks every year getting yelled at. Um, which really teaches you quick that operational efficiency and ease of troubleshooting are, are you know, two things first and foremost. Anything for us that collapses, you know, collapses the problem set down um, and, and allows us to troubleshoot faster is always more of a shoe in Now, we, we have uh, usual at big companies, pretty well-defined silos in the company. These are, these are breaking down pretty quick for us, but... But there's, um, still a, there's still a large networking silo right. or networking yeah. expertise. Um, so any solution that crosses those bounds outside of OpenStack or outside of what sh we should be controlling is, is a danger area, I guess. So we would, you know, we've actually started going down the Contrail, Open Contrail route. I think it's got a lot of benefits. We're a huge Juniper shop, and there's a lot of integration with, uh, with Neutron as well, although it rips out most of it. Um, <coughs> But there's some compelling arguments to that, especially on those edge conditions where, where customers want to plumb things in and out of OpenStack. It would make it a lot easier. And it also creates a single dashboard for, both, for multiple teams to look at it and be able to control. So that's a good thing. Um, but there's a ton of complexity behind that and a ton of extra operational uh, and operational cost uh, as far as manpower and training and getting used to that. And uh, I would say that we just aren't quite there yet with respect to that. So we're always looking for solutions that we can deploy tomorrow or three months later or in the next release of OpenStack that really help fundamentally reduce the problems that we have within OpenStack. I, one more, more follow-on comment on that. Um, Kyle Mestery at uh, uh, the, the PTL during the, the, the Liberty Cycle um, has reiterated and re-reiterated and re-re-reiterated that Neutron is now a platform. It's not a solution, it's a place to make solutions. So be aware that, that you know, there's a lot of valid solutions and there will be more valid solutions as time goes on. So, so don't think of Neutron as a solution, think of Neutron as a platform for networking and people are bringing solutions to it. I, I actually, one more thing on that. Um, I actually really like some of the things that ODL is do doing, and I was trying to set up a project where all, uh, using ODL to map our entire uh, network infrastructure in OpenStack, um, which actually I just didn't have time to complete. My, my feedback on that is it's, you have to be a technical expert at a certain point. You need to dig in, have time to maintain, or to spend on that and become the expert because it's not out of the box, flip a few switches and go. There's a ton of setup time. And so that goes back to the simplicity and ease of troubleshooting. When something went wrong with o ODL or ODL caused some impact on my, uh, my OpenStack instance, which did happen up front until I learned the bits to flip, um, there's nothing wrong with a lot of these tools. It's what your organization is trained for and how much technical ability and time you have to, to introduce those. Uh, uh, maybe that's way too practical, but <laughs> another question, are, uh, and then you. Distributed virtual router DVR. Yeah. Uh, the DVR is a very overloaded term. It turns out. Yeah. Well. <laughs>
So we have we have internal projects that's DVR, digital video recording. Right. Yeah, because and, we're and it's not only that, it's cloud DVR. It's so very it's overloaded, right. sure. Right. So we have to context switch. The short answer is uh, I keep going down that path every release and following that, and then I feel like there's not enough operational tooling in Neutron to help troubleshoot as it is, and now we've just distributed that problem around. So I spend an, uh, at least I have one, I have, I have three network nodes and I know where to go for most of those problems. I don't want to have 200 problems, faces to go across. Um, there are a few bugs in there that I'm, I'm following that I just, at this point, I, for us, it's not ready to and go. There, there's like two blueprints to, to make that even more distributed. I don't know if you saw those. There were sessions uh, this week on that as well. So it's definitely something we're keeping in touch with, but... I think two, if I had to, you know, yeah. put my finger to the wind and, and guess, yeah, uh, I think it'll be two releases for us before we probably are ready to take that plunge. Uh, it's, it, I think it's going the right direction. It's slower than everybody wants, obviously. Me too, but it's the way it is. Gentleman in the middle. Easy OS. I don't, I, there, there, there's some reference information in the documentation and in the blog posts that will talk about the speed ups, but we have not done any, we have not done any performance evaluations. I was happy to get it running, so on the plane flight over. Yeah. I, I, I don't have anything yet, but I, if I can get it put together in, in Neutron in our environment in 12 hours, that's pretty good. I won't go there, but. And another question? Yes, ma'am? Oh. This? this or the, the, oh, the kernel, or the, the, the 4.0. Okay. Where are we here? There we go. Um, I would, so the best resource that I have is Rackspace gave a talk at uh, the Paris Summit. That's called, you know, uh, taking open vSwitch to, to the ludicrous. ludicrous yeah, look, def, keyword is ludicrous, they, right? They outline everything in there. That, yeah. that was an amazing So talk. search for this term. Oh. That's why I put ludicrous in there. Uh, yeah. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you search for this term, uh, ludicrous, not the pre, but just the ludicrous, and Rackspace and OpenStack, you'll probably find the right talk. And that's everything that they presented there I found true when we upgraded. Uh, there was a quick. Yeah. We haven't we haven't tested that or even exercised. I can't say we haven't even brought that up. So certainly haven't tested it. We're certainly not. Telling, uh, telling I was unfamiliar with the term DPDK until last week. No, well. <laughs> Versus, versus which? Versus? I think because it's simplifying the pipeline, it probably uh, improves it. I don't know if it still falls, uh, falls apart at scale or not. We haven't done that test. Well, uh, got two things on that. One is... Uh, when I, this is the reason I put normal use cases on here. We're not trying to press for traffic. We have, where, where we gate uh, right now on standard Neutron is we're using, you know, two 10 gig bonds. So we've got 20 gig, gig pipe for tenant traffic. Um, once we, we have some weird interaction that I'm troubleshooting right now between security groups and VXLAN. Don't ask me why, because I don't know yet. Um, if you take the straight straight tunnel, I can push about, Eight, eight gig, six to eight gig through a pipe, which is pretty, pretty good. I thought it was pretty good. I figure I can tweak that a little bit. As soon as I add security groups to the mix, I'm dropping down to about six gig. And so with a reworked security group solution, we may get yeah. some of that back. So that, uh, 
I want to understand how that works. I, I suspect, although you know, I, my plane flight hacking aside over here, uh, that OVN will will increase or decrease the overhead of making changes to the system. I think fundamentally, if you're seeing some uh, problems in OVS, that's going to remain there. Uh, thank you for your participation. And uh, I have one more talk later today I'll give a little shout out to. Um, it's about OpenStack trivia. I'm slightly better prepared for it, and I promise Frisbees. <laughs> so, uh, and again, if you had a question today and you would like a Frisbee, come and find me uh, in an hour. We'll uh, take questions up here, and thank you guys very much for coming. Also, uh, Time Warner Cable has uh, another talk coming up, uh, I think right, right next uh, upstairs, I think. Or no, downstairs. 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 Uh, using bailing wire to fix your production open set. <laughs>